Talk about Microsoft um, extending additional free security tools. So, you know, as a former marketer, there's always a, you know, there's always a fantastic market for free stuff, right? So, <laughs> um, and so, you know, this was an article that appeared in, in Reuters, but, you know, and many believe that it's, you know, uh, a result of some of the security breaches, you know, that, that, that Microsoft has, uh, has had to kind of uh, weather the storm from, but, you know, I tell you what, I mean, I think there, there's, you know, freemium models always prove um, to be successful in a lot of different ways. I mean, that's how Zoom very quickly built um, its business, you know, in consumer during the pandemic. Um, and then obviously focusing on enterprise and shoring up its security issues and the Zoom bombing um, that, that invariably occurred. And, you know, in fact, my daughter experienced that while she was attending Texas Tech University during the pandemic. But um, but, you know, and obviously Azure is building a lot of cloud um, security capabilities, but Microsoft in general, and um, they've got quite a footprint. And in fact, recently um, I was briefed on the Intra platform, which is their uh, identity access management um, solution set. And again, I just, I continue to be impressed with what Microsoft's doing in security. And um, not a lot of people typically associate Microsoft with uh, being a security solution provider. We always yeah. think about Office 365, right, and Excel and Word and, and all of that. But um, and I know, Matt, you're going to have a perspective on this as well. But um, what do you think? I have actually a question for you. You know, I mean, it's there. It goes this this to me is interesting because when you, you mention, you know, access management, um, identity access management, privileged access management, all these are different kind of um, point solutions that companies, I think of like a cyber arc up in Boston, right? And mm -hmm. they've made a huge killing on identity access and privileged access. You know, does does Microsoft kind of baking this into, you know, uh, everything they do kind of just commoditize that market and take away the, the ability of these? Is, is this the beginning of some level of consolidation in that regard? Or what do you think? Well, that's a great question because actually this uh, this conversation came up um, at Cisco Live when I had a chance to speak with Tom Gillis that's running um, their 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 new security strategy, uh, the Cisco Security Cloud. And from my perspective, and you know, Cisco feels the same. You know, to you know, the ability to be able to provide a, a requisite basic level uh, set of, of, of security is one thing. It's not going to be all things to all people, but um, to do that and then and then use that as a platform, again, getting back to that whole notion of freemium that I was referring to earlier, and to be able to move people, customers up the stack and specifically based on workload and environment, be able to point them in the right direction, like, you know, hey, this is a baseline, but you know, given your workload, given your requirements, you know, consider X, Y, and Z. I know, I, th I think it's a brilliant strategy and and it's, I think it's less commoditization. Um, it's certainly going to drive further consolidation because I think, Matt, you would agree that we're beginning to see that um, mm -hmm. the amount of point solutions that, that enterprises are managing, it's just become untenable. Uh, we've talked about those numbers, I think, on a prior podcast. Um, and so there's going to be a level of consolidation and, and this might be Microsoft's way to sort of establish a beachhead and do that. So, but I've got a question for Paul um, from a, you know, from, from a security standpoint in your coverage area with AI and quantum and that sort of thing. Um, do you see Microsoft being a big player um, in the kind of the area that, that you cover? Uh, <clears throat> Security's not really that much of an issue right now. Uh, it will become an issue. Uh, the, you know, the biggest security issue right now is uh, uh, getting ready for when quantum computers become big enough to uh, to, to break uh, RSA. You know, right? So, Interesting. Uh, well, hey, let's let's go to you, Paul, on your next topic. Oh, and you, oh, oh Matt, you want to say something? One, sorry, oh, look at that finger. That's crazy. Oh, hey, yeah. uh, <laughs> one last thing. Well, it's it's funny. Just yeah. kind of back to the whole Microsoft thing. This is what I yeah. find interesting. Right. Um, this is the analogy I'm going to draw. You know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, people were spending, you know, consumers were spending gobs of money every year on antivirus, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. McAfee, um, right. Symantec, you know, all of these. Were, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
And um, Windows, Microsoft came out with this thing called Windows Defender. And mm -hmm. um, lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, people stopped spending money on um, these these point solutions, right? That's kind yeah. of where, what, asking that question, it's kind of where my head is, is yeah. coming from. It. And they do such a good job of integrating it into everything in the OS, right? And up the stack from the OS. So mm -hmm. it's going to be fun to watch. Um, no, for, for sure. sure. No, I love that analogy. Yeah. If you go one step back from that, remember when uh, uh, you had to buy spam protection? Yeah. Oh, I remember that. No, it's a great, it's a great analogy, Matt. 